In this video, we're going to talk about containers. What are they? What are they used for? And why do they matter in Webflow? Now, I'm sure you've seen containers in Webflow. You've seen this element here and you've seen it in perhaps templates or Webflow projects that you worked on. So containers are very important. They really help structure your website. They help the layout stay consistent and they help with responsiveness. So let's look into containers and let's see how they're used. So containers in Webflow help you center and organize your content, making sure everything stays neat and responsive across different screen sizes. Now, uh, if for example, we see something like the Apple website here, we can see that everything is aligned within the center. And if we zoom out, we can see that everything is aligned within the center and that is due to containers. And if we have a look at how another project, so this is a project from day four, and we can see that we have things set inside a container here named container large. Now, where do containers usually go? They always go inside a section. Now, you can add some extra classes like I have here a padding global, some paddings, but there always needs to be a container inside a section. So the container, as you can see, holds everything together inside this centered margin that I put in. If you're enjoying this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Your support means a lot. Let's get back to it. So if we go to a blank project now here and we add a container, you can see that it's directly added in the center of the page. And now I can directly start adding content inside and it's already in the center of the page without me having to do anything. It's already centered. It's already organized. It's already contained within a container. Now, div locks versus containers. Containers are convenient. They come pre-configured. As you can see, they have a max width here, in this case, 940. Uh, they have auto margins on the side and they come in display block. And this is good because it doesn't have any extra lines of code. This is just pre-configured from Webflow itself. In this case, this is convenient. I can just put it in and start working on the project. However, div block gives us more flexibility. So if I put a div block here and I can name it container and I can add in the same content. So let's paste this here. So now what I will have to do in div blocks, I will have to configure this manually. So in this case, I will say 940 and then I will have to space them auto margins on the side. So if I click on this button, it just sets auto auto on the right and left. And I can set it to be 100%. Oh, they don't set it to be 100%, so that's okay. So as you can see now, it looks the same. Now, in my case, the blocks offer great design control, but require more manual setup compared to the Webflow container. But I prefer, and if you can see a lot of projects, do prefer having a div block as a container because at the end, when uh, the site is published, they're both actually div blocks. So if we see in the inspect, and if we look at it in the spec here, we can see that they're both div blocks but one of them has the Webflow container added to it. Now let's go back to our project. We're setting up the container class. So in this case, I set up a container class. Now you might see this as container large, like we saw it in the other project, or you might see it as uh, you contain like in the Loomis framework or many other namings that can be there. However, setting this as a class that you can use across the project is a very good practice because uh, you're going to keep wanting to have everything within the same margin like we saw on the apple website everything was neatly margined in the center and that's why uh, using the same container will help make sure that is always the case and of course when the screen sizes are smaller so in this case this also falls into place another container related uh, query that we can use is a container type. So if we go to custom properties, we can add the custom property of container type. Now this is a bit more advanced, but it can be very useful. Uh, so it's container type and the value is size. And this helps us control the size of the elements inside compared to the container. So in this case, we're going to set this heading to be, let's say, full width of the container and it will uh, grow and shrink according to the size of the container. So let's try that. So we set the container to be container type size and then we'll set the heading to be size custom and then it will be, I think, 27 SQW, maybe 26. 
So SQW is a container query width. Let's set this height to be one so that it always uh, wraps nicely. So now if you can see, if I uh, decrease the screen size here, you can see that the heading is also decreasing. And if I increase it, it's growing with it. If we see this heading here, which is a normal uh, REM size, let's maybe size this one bigger as well, uh, maybe four, let's make it 10 and also give it one height. So if you see now, if I scroll here, the REM heading is getting out of the container, but uh, CQW is staying within the container. So this is a nice fun little uh, tip that you can use to keep your text or titles within the container that you set up. Thank you for watching the video. Tomorrow we'll get more into structure and how to build on Webflow. See you tomorrow.